Welcome to USMLE Sarti. We are committed to empowering IMGs. We're excited to guide you on your match journey. Don't forget to click subscribe and turn on notifications so you can get notified whenever we add new content. Also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter for the latest tips and tricks regarding everything USMLE. Now, let's dive into it. Welcome, everyone. So today we have a special webinar. Uh, our former student, Dr. Sangam, uh, who is at a pre-match program. So we wanted to talk about what pre-match programs are, how are they different, if they are different, and uh, how are interviews different, how does uh, pre-match offer, et cetera, work. And of course, anything else that you may have uh, questions about on the pre-match. So in terms of housekeeping, uh, we'll take questions after uh, we've done with the initial set of questions. So you can put them in the chat. And uh, Sejal from our team is also there. And uh, you know she can also give you information if you would like. So uh, without uh, further delay, uh, it's my pleasure to welcome uh, Dr. Sangam. Uh, Sangam, welcome. And uh, uh, glad you're here. Let's get started. And why don't you tell a bit about yourself to our audience? Uh, thank you so much, Pavan. First of all, thank you for inviting me here on this platform so I can connect to people and actually share my experience. So thank you for that first. So uh, my name is Dr. Sangam. I am from India. I graduated from All India Institute of Medical Sciences in, uh, in India in 2020. And then I subsequently applied for the match, went through the whole process like you guys are going through right now. And I last year, I took a pre-match offer at one of the programs in here in New York City. And right now, I am a uh, PGY1 resident at one such program in New York City. Thank you. Thank you, Sangam. So let's just get started um, with the basic question. Uh, what is a pre-match program and how is that different in general from the programs that go in match? Mm -hmm. So uh, so the pre-match programs, they are very different when it comes to functioning or other aspects. The only way they differ from regular programs are that uh, you apply to a uh, to all the programs through ERAS, that doesn't change. The only way a pre-match program differs from a regular program is that they do not participate in the NRMP match. So you need to apply to ERAS. You need to do all the things that you do for a regular program. But then when you get an offer from a pre-match program, you have maybe one day, three day, or one week, depending on the program, to accept that offer and you withdraw from the NRMP match. So that's the only way it differs from a regular program. There is no other difference. Okay, good, thank you. And uh, for those of uh, us, uh, the students who will be applying next season, how do they identify a pre-match program? I mean, we have some mm -hmm. blogs where we have identified pre-match programs, but in general, what is the best way to identify what's a pre-match program? So I think there are a lot of lists, like you said, on blogs out there, former residents, even Sarti has a list of pre-match program from what I remember. And the best way I found, uh, I had to find a pre-match program was like, you can just find it on Frida. There's no, like, it has everything that you need. So you just go on a pre-match program. Uh, you just go, sorry, uh, you go on Frida and you configure the filters. So for a pre-match program, you need to first select the filter that says that the program participates in ERAs. Uh, and the second filter you need to select is that the program does not participate in NRMP match. So that's it. That's the two filters that you are supposed to choose. And then it will give you a list of approximately 20, 25 programs. And then you can apply filters like H1 visa or J1. My, most of the pre-match programs sponsor H1 visa. Uh, some might not sponsor visa at all. I remember there were some in the Midwest that were pre-match but did not sponsor visa. So you have to uh, filter them out. So at the end of the list, you'll get around, say, 8 and 20 programs that uh, are pre-match and mostly, I think, concentrated in the Northeast. Okay. Um, so now let's talk about, you know, 
you apply to the programs and uh, you, you are getting ready for the interview. So the first question is, should is there a timing to interview with the pre-match programs? Should you interview in the beginning of the season, towards the end of the season? What What's the general advice you will give? So the thing with pre-match programs is that they give you an offer on the spot. Like on the spot, not definitely like at the maybe sometimes even at the end of the interview, I I, I know that has happened, but uh, the thing is they will give you the offer within a week or so, most of them, and uh, so it's basically first come first serve basis. So if you interview early with them, it's uh, and they like you and they offer you, then you get the seat. But if you interview really late with them, then there might not be any positions available. They might just stop interviewing people because now they are full. So I think, and there's also this consideration that you are also applying to other programs, right? And the interviews, they it's not like you're going to get the interviews uh, from all the programs in October or early November. So uh, most IMGs, they start getting their interviews in November, uh, beginning of November. And uh, most I got most of my interviews in, I think, first two weeks of November. And many people get interviews up until December. So I think the sweet spot there is in the middle of the interview season that don't do it too early so as you don't know what other opportunities you have say uh, but don't do it too late don't wait until january or february because by that time i think most of the pre-match programs that start interviewing say by november they will already have filled all their positions or they'll have very few positions left so uh i would say the best time to do it is in um uh, late November, early December, I think that's the best part to interview with a pre-match program so that you know exactly say that if you have, by that time, if you have say only five interviews and if you get an offer, then you can take a call on it that, okay, I have less number of interviews. So I think this is the right thing to do. I can take the offer right now. Or maybe if you like some other programs more than the program that the pre-match program that you interviewed at and uh, you have say 10, 12 interviews like it depends I, I don't remember exactly what the ratio is right now but like uh, so if you have sufficient number of interviews and you like some of the programs in your interview list more than the program the pre-match offered then you can take the call that okay I'm gonna take my chances in the match so I think that's the better time like not too early not too late somewhere in the middle. All right, as uh, so we are starting uh, the discussion on interviews. For mm -hmm. those of you who are interested, we've launched some new interview plans. So Sejal can uh, post the links and you can read up and let us know if you are interested and we'll help you with the interviews. Uh, so uh, let's let's talk about interviewing at the pre-match programs. So is the interview preparation or the questions different or are they same uh, i think there's no difference in the interview preparation the questions everything is the same i think the only difference in uh which is not a lot but i think the only difference in interview in a pre-match program is your intention to accept their offer so if it is conveyed in any way that you might not take the offer that you are say looking for, you are more interested in some other program or like you would maybe wait for them either another pre-match or another program in the match, then they will not extend you the offer. So I think that's the only difference that you have to make your intentions really clear that if I'm, if you make me the offer right now, I'm gonna accept it. Okay, so that's one of the differences, I see, okay. Now, uh, you, you did mention about, um, you know, this accepting a pre-match offer or how soon they can give you an offer. In general, what are the factors uh, a student should consider uh, before accepting a pre-match? I know it varies from student to student, mm -hmm. and you did mention number of interviews that they may have. What are some of the other factors? Uh, I would say that accepting any offer is a very highly personalized decision. Like you said, you know, it varies from student to student. So it's not only like a uh, number of interviews is just a subjective marker. Like it also depends on your year of graduation, like, 
and uh, on how comfortable you are going into the match have you applied previous year and have you uh, failed to match like is this your first cycle or second or third cycle those all those things they come into account even other personal aspects like it even if it's your first cycle you have a family and or can you afford uh will it be hard for you financially to the to apply to the next math cycle all those things come into play so at the end of the day it's a job offer and it's an opportunity to advance in training so i think all these factors come into play and it varies from individual to individual say for example i uh graduated i was a recent graduate but i was stuck in india with covid and it was my very first math cycle but I did not want to risk it. At the end of the day, it's a training program and most pre-match programs are community programs and uh, they are similar to whatever programs there are in the match. And your certification is going to be same. You have um, uh, people match into fellowship. So it was a no-brainer for me. But for somebody else, it might vary. So depending on their personal situation. Yeah, thank you. And I guess a related question is, uh, you know, there is a perception, right or wrong, that the uh, pre-match program, the quality of work, or, you know, some of those things are, are not good. So how are pre-match programs different when you are there as a resident? What difference or differences have you seen? Mm -hmm. So I would say that uh, in terms of, you know, quality of training or uh, in terms of quality of work, I would say they are the same. I think the only thing that's different would be the quantity of work that you are doing because uh, say most of the pre-match programs you would see are in New York City and New York City has very high patient traffic. And it's the same for like, it's it's the same for every community hospital in New York City, not just pre-match program. So the workload is definitely going to be high. And uh, as you, and in pre-match programs, one other thing that I've noticed is like, yeah, you are expected to do sometimes what we call scut work, like uh, drawing blood. And maybe sometimes if it's an emergency, then pushing the patient to CT or things like that. But uh, I think that's true for other community programs in a city like New York as well. Uh, you don't see it really happening in, say, upstate New York or in the Midwest, whether the program is pre-match or not. So I think more it's it's more dependent on the nature of where uh, the program is and what kind of patient load they have. Yeah, thank you. And I do see a question here, and, and guys, you can start in the chat if you have questions. So one of the questions I see is, how to reach out to the pre-match program. So let's say they are either trying to get an interview or maybe, yeah, let's start with trying to get an interview. How to reach out to the pre-match uh, pre programs and is, are there any differences or different ways that you would do it with other programs if you are trying to get an interview? So I think when you say that, you know, there's the earlier you start reaching out to programs, the better it is and it's more true than anything for the pre-match programs because some programs they just close their interview seasons by November so you know start as soon as the your ERAS applications begin so I think that's one of the things that you know start emailing them call them uh, if you are in the city if you are in the in commutable distance within commutable distance of that program then I would say go there in person talk to try talking to the program coordinator, see if you can, one of the things I've noticed is see if their programs have any volunteer opportunities or any observerships over there. So if mm -hmm. you can get that, then I think, uh, and you perform well in those, then you can get out, can potentially get an interview. So I would say like, you know, reach out early, go there in person if you can, and try to get opportunities and that in that program in terms of, uh, observerships or volunteer experience okay. and post interview so let's say you interviewed but they haven't given you an offer in the last say three four days or whatever how do you increase your chances to get that offer 
after the end uh, i think uh, the only way in that situation is to make your intent clear that yeah i mean you are willing to come there you are willing to work there and so if uh, always always send a thank you email to the pd to the persons who interviewed you say send a thank you email to the program coordinator and i would say like if it's been three or four days you know you can wait wait up to a week after the interview and then you know send a reminder email to the pd or the person the apd or the program coordinator you know people who you interviewed with if you interviewed with a resident you know send an email to the resident to asking that you know that uh, just knowing the status of when asking for a or asking for a timeline as to when you can expect to hear back from them so i think those things do matter you need to reach out to them so that that sort of is it's an indication of your intention that you are really interested into the program and if you get an offer you are likely to match uh, you you are likely to accept it okay all right um all right i think those were most of the things that we wanted to discuss uh you know in the audience if you have questions you can start chatting or putting it in uh, but sangam anything else that you want to highlight when it came to a pre match program that we missed i think uh i think we have covered most of the points in a pre match program but i would say you know when it comes to finding a pre match program the key is to start early find the programs and sometimes you know for some programs you also have to look at the demographics like uh many programs they are in uh, uh uh their patient population is mainly hispanic so sometimes it's good to you know get started on learning spanish maybe even elementary spanish and it will take you maybe 4 6 weeks to do that especially in new york city so i think that's one thing that can help you with your application not just with pre match programs but also in general yeah yeah uh all right i think there are a couple of other questions and i'll take those but uh... thank you very much uh, sangam i appreciate your time talking to us and uh, uh, letting us know more about the pre match programs and and you know for to our audience if you have more questions i'm going to be staying back so that uh, you know we can let him go he's busy so but thank you very much uh, sangam much appreciate your time yeah thank you so much for this opportunity pavan always glad nice talking to you Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay, so let me take other questions. Uh, there's are there other uh, psychiatry pre-match programs or only I am? Yes, there are psychiatry pre-match programs also. Uh, in fact, most specialties have some pre-match programs, and I think Sejal just posted a link so you can you can see the list of uh, pre-match programs. Um, Kushbu is asking, can we email a resident before the interview? Yeah, if you know the email of the resident and uh, if you've had some interaction, you can always email. But uh, the email should be some kind of a value added. I mean, what are you going to email about? I think that makes a lot of difference. So as long as the content has some direction, some value, uh, you can email. uh like i was saying we do have uh, some new interview preparation plans that uh, you may want to look at uh, especially if you don't have much time and you are interviewing in the coming 3 4 5 days or a week uh, there, there are some quick paced uh, prep plans so you can look at uh, otherwise if there are questions i am here uh should we tell them that we want to rank them highly or number 1 after the interview or can we skip this sentence in or we can skip this sentence in our thank you email so asma is asking this question so obviously uh, this is for the programs that are going in the match uh, in the thank you email it depends on the timing so in november let's say it's too early to tell a program that we are going to rank you number 1 the assumption is you know you are going to be interviewing in november december 
so that you know i'll rank you number 1 or highly those kind of things should wait till january or late december uh, otherwise the program will think you are too desperate you have only one interview or two interviews and that's why you already decided to rank them high all right uh, are there any other questions okay if there are no other questions thank you very much i know it's late night in asia and it's a sunday here uh, so i'll keep the chat open so that you can grab the link and uh, we'll have uh, you there in a next webinar very soon thank you Thank you so much for watching. We hope that video provided valuable insights for your journey. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And check out our website for details on how we can guide you to a successful match.